I told mommy and daddy, and they had to sign non-disclosure agreements promptly afterward. I told my brother and his wife, they also signed NDAs, and then my two best friends, Jackie and Meg. I told them I was doing it, but otherwise, I kept the secret pretty pretty well, and I'm I'm not one to be trusted with lots of secrets. I'll, I'll talk to someone about it or have to unload it on someone. So the mass Singer really took a big risk in having me as a part of the program, but I really did a good job keeping it to myself. I did not tell Tara Lipinski because when I found out she was on vacation and I didn't know how to get an NDA to her because everyone I told had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, even people in the business, even my agents. I mean, all 13 of them had to sign one because they all knew. <laughs> you wear gloves, you cover, I had to cover up my Birkins with a, with a cloth so nobody would see my handbag even walking into the studio. Um, and that rule goes for everybody. You can't talk to anyone else. I was this close to Butterfly, who I went head to head with, and she has an incredible real singer sort of quality to her voice, and I have no idea who she was. So the, not, the, the anonymity thing is real. The secret, the guessing game, that's a huge part of the show. And if you don't have that aspect and that kind of secrecy, it won't be as fun for everyone. But I'm gonna be stuck with the rest of America, sitting back, watching at my couch at home to figure out the other celebrities in the show. It's really awesome. Originally, when I was asked to be a part of The Masked Singer, I wanted to be some kind of an Arctic fox or a walrus, just something really cold. So it would almost be a clue for the audience that, hey, winter, ice, ice skating, Johnny Weir, you know. You have to start thinking in those roundabout kind of ways when it comes to your clues. And there were already a lot of animals being featured on this season of The Masked Singer. So the producer said, why don't you choose something else? And then you're like, okay, am I a taxi cab? Am I the Eiffel Tower? And then immediately it came to me egg. Johnny, you're going to be an egg, you're going to be a Fabergé egg at that, and you're going to be fabulous. So I went with the egg idea. Um, Masha Toibina, who's nominated for an Emmy for her work on season one with the costumes and masks, uh, she helped me a lot sort of prepare all of these different egg ideas. So the jacket looked like a cracked eggshell. The face obviously was a bit cartoonish, so I, the, the mask gives you a lot of personality because no one can see your face. The hat's the fried egg, and then the Fabergé details were all over my, my costume. So there are a lot of different egg elements in the costume. And that aspect of the creative process of The Masked Singer was just awesome, watching the best people in the business do what they do and do it so well. Lady Gaga has been my queen since the beginning. And also I knew I wouldn't forget the lyrics because I'm such a big fan. So um, I chose the Gaga song as sort of my comfort zone because I knew I wouldn't forget those lyrics, but then it became a, a question of, are you going to be on the right note? So are you going to remember your marks? So are you going to remember the choreography that you have to do to match the dancers? Because I'm pretty much a solo act aside from my work with Tara Lipinski and Terry Gannon for the Olympics. And I don't usually play well when other people are in my sandbox. So there are dancers there, I have to remember them and there's a lot of things going on. And also, I can only see through about that much of the mouth on the egg's face. So finding my marks is really difficult. The whole thing is super difficult, super out there, super weird, but no regrets, I had the best time ever. If you love that video, you're gonna love everything on the Access YouTube channel, so hit the subscribe button. You can thank me later. Hit it.